The Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew. When Jesus heard that John had been arrested, he withdrew to Galilee. He left Nazareth and made his home in Capernaum by the lake, in the territory of Zebulun and Naphtali, so that what had been spoken through the prophet Isaiah might be fulfilled. Land of Zebulun, land of Naphtali, on the road by the sea, across the Jordan, Galilee of the Gentiles. The people who sat in darkness have seen a great light, and for those who sat in the region and shadow of death, light has dawned. From that time, Jesus began to proclaim, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven has come near. As he walked by the Sea of Galilee, he saw two brothers, Simon, who was called Peter, and Andrew, his brother, casting a net into the lake, for they were fishermen. And he said to them, follow me, and I will make you fish for people. Immediately, they left their nets and followed him. As he went from there, he saw two other brothers, James, son of Zebedee, and his brother John, in the boat with their father Zebedee, mending their nets. And he called them. Immediately, they left the boat and their father and followed him. Jesus went throughout Galilee, teaching in their synagogues and proclaiming the good news of the kingdom and curing every disease and every sickness among the people. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. You may be seated. <clears throat> One of the loaded words that Christians will often argue about and spend lots of time thinking about is the word salvation. Christians in other traditions will sometimes talk about the importance of knowing when exactly it was that you were saved, while others will point to salvation as something that happens to us after we die. But careful readers of the Bible will notice that salvation isn't just about what happens to us after we die. Scripture does speak to some of that. But the overwhelming point of Scripture is that salvation is not just in the future tense, but also in the present tense. Here's a quote from a book we're studying on Sunday night called Surprised by Hope by a well-respected New Testament scholar by the name of N.T. Wright. God's kingdom in the preaching of Jesus refers not to post-mortem destiny, not to our escape from this world into another one, but to God's sovereign rule coming on earth as it is in heaven. Salvation, being saved, means that we are rescued from something for something. We are rescued from sin, death, and the devil so that we can serve God in his kingdom. In a few minutes, we're going to pray the Lord's Prayer together before we receive the Eucharist, the Lord's Supper. And as we pray, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven, one of the things that we will be praying for is that God's kingdom would come among and in us. In our gospel reading for this morning, we are reminded that that very prayer that we will pray is not just a wishful prayer, but instead is a reality. Jesus starts by saying, repent, for the kingdom of heaven has come near. And with this declaration, Jesus is announcing that the kingdom of heaven is not just some far off place that we get taken to when we die. It comes to bear now. It is to borrow from the Lord's Prayer, coming to be among us on earth as it is in heaven. God's rule and reign have come to this earth. 
So then, as people who have been called as disciples of Jesus, our call is not just to bide our time before we die so that we can be blessed with the kingdom of heaven. It's to recognize that God's kingdom is breaking in right here and right now among us. This call to be bearers of God's kingdom on earth was first given to some fishermen who were doing their everyday jobs. They are not in the temple, nor are they at some temple prayer meeting or Torah study. They're just working and doing their everyday normal jobs. Ordinary fishermen who are called to do something extraordinary. And brothers and sisters, by God's grace, that is still happening today. See, the call to follow Jesus isn't reserved for just those fishermen out by the sea, nor is it reserved for those of us who wear white robes and green stoles on Sunday morning. The call to follow Jesus is something for all of us. It may come in a worship service, But the gospel also reminds us that the call to follow Jesus often happens in our everyday sort of grind. This morning, we are commissioning seven new Stephen ministers to serve in our congregation. And as we give God thanks for Melissa, for Paul, for Ruth, for Ray Lynn, Shannon, Celeste, and Karen... We are also realizing that by God's grace, Stephen ministry has been happening here for a long time at Zion. For 20 years, this church has provided space for people who have particular gifts and training to be signs of God's kingdom breaking in as they serve as Stephen ministers. Here's the thing, though that strikes me about our Stephen ministers as Zion. No one would ever say that they are super Christians or all that special. As I said at eight, sorry. <clears throat> they are baptized children of God who happen to be living out their call to follow Jesus in this particular way. Their ministry is to provide distinctively Christian care to those that are going through hard times. It might be after someone loses the job. It might be after the divorce papers are filed or the cancer diagnosis or the death of a loved one. Part of what Stephen Ministry does is to recognize that there is pain in this world and that following Jesus has never meant that suffering or pain will be taken away. But by God's grace, pain and suffering are taken and used and redeemed to point to the very fact that God's kingdom is breaking in. They aren't superheroes or anything like that. But instead, what we are saying this morning is we are saying that something, or better yet, someone stirred up in them way back during the summer. So much so that they decided to pick up an application, fill it out, come to an interview, and then go through 50 hours of training on Thursday nights until 9.30, and then some Saturdays as well too. And as they learned about things like confidentiality, listening, trust and grace-based acceptance, they realized that God was stirring up in them gifts so that they could provide high-quality Christian care for people. They are ordinary, baptized children of God, and yet God will use them in extraordinary ways. But lest you think that this is a quote-unquote Stephen Ministry Sunday or a sermon about Stephen Ministry, understand this. 
The call to discipleship, to follow Jesus, isn't just limited to people wearing blue shirts this morning. It also has everything to do with all of the baptized people of God. In baptism, we are given a calling, a vocation, to serve God and to serve our neighbor by following Jesus. And even if we didn't know that this is the case, God has already been using all of us to go on this adventure that we call salvation. In the end, I believe that the best way to talk about salvation is to talk about it as an adventure. Jesus comes to those first four fishermen and comes to us and invites us to follow him. Not knowing every detail, not knowing every step of the journey, but only assuring us that he will be with us as we follow him. His presence with us will be enough. Quite honestly, I think we all need to hear those words several times over the next few years. Because we are, quite frankly, in a time of adventure for this congregation as we think about our own future facility needs. Next Sunday, next Sunday is an important Sunday and an important step in the adventure that we've been calling under construction After several months of hard work by many folks in the congregation, it's time to vote, both on our master plan for facilities and to engage a capital consultant. And anyone that's been through this sort of process before knows that that is no small task for any church. But the point of all of this talk about facilities has first and foremost been about us trying to follow Jesus. This whole process is nothing about what Pastor Dave or I or anyone else in this room wants in terms of facilities. The whole point of this process is that we are trying as the people of God here at Zion Lutheran Church to follow Jesus. And if we vote to go forward in the next steps of our under construction emphasis, which I really hope that we do, the only way that we can faithfully go forward is to continue this process as an act of discipleship. In other words, we do not do this in order for us to build big buildings and to say what great and wonderful people we are here at Zion Lutheran Church. We do this because we trust that Jesus is calling us to follow him. I don't know how this journey, this adventure, will end. We have our initial concept drawings, but things can change. But what I do know is this, brothers and sisters, as we move forward, Jesus will be with us calling us to follow him, and that will be enough. Amen.